Hey, hey, welcome back to Take 10 with Jen. It is Monday, it is Monday the 19th of October, I think. And I hope you guys are all having a really great week so far. I'm coming to you live from Wollongong and I come to you each week with different tips and tricks to help you to increase your resilience in one of three areas, physical health and well-being, financial health and well-being, and the six inches of real estate between your ears, which is a really cool phrase that I've been hearing lately from Kerwin and Ray. So I want to talk to you today about money. So for those of you that are like kind of internally, you know, wincing or shying away or leaning out when you hear people talk about money, well, you know, this is something I guess which we need to talk about more of, I think. And I think we don't need to kind of be shy or embarrassed about it. And, and you know, possibly there is some kind of money story there if for you it creates some kind of discomfort talking about it or hearing about it. But it's so important these days, especially with the current financial climate that we are all in. You know, we are facing, you know, a, a recession after 30 years of, you know, a steady incline in, in Australians kind of financial well-being. And now we are facing a decline. And, and this will apply to you wherever you are in the world, I think. So last week was Financial Inclusion Week. And basically, hi, Anique. That Financial Inclusion Week was a global gathering of financial, the financial kind of community, so the, the leaders in the financial community, all coming together to put their heads together and to talk about a concept called financial inclusion and how to kind of advance that in the global world. So global world, the world, which is global. So thanks, Anik. So financial inclusion is basically having access that is, that is like an equal opportunity to access financial products and services wherever you might live. Now, this might all seem a little bit kind of boring, but stay tuned, keep listening. So it basically means, you know, having access to be able to, you know, to have insurance, to get loans, to get some equity, to get financial advice, to be able to save money. So like, you know, places where you can actually place savings, which you know, to us might be something that we take for granted, but it's actually, you know, kind of a minority in the world. So they come together to really try and work out how the world can become a lot more equal in that way and have equal financial opportunities. So that's financial inclusion. And there was a talk by Venita Godino, apologies if I've pronounced that incorrectly, and she um, heads up Financial Resilience Australia, which is a really cool website that I'm getting to know. And she spoke about how COVID-19, you know, is affecting the financial well-being of Australians and the world. Of course, we know that. And how we can actually increase our financial well-being. So financial well-being is the ability to basically enjoy your life because you are able to access whatever you need with money, right? Whenever you need it. You've got, you're able to meet your everyday commitments and responsibilities without excess pressure and stress. You know, you've got a safety net in place for unexpected financial shocks and you're able to achieve your long-term financial goals. So how about you? Where are you at with that stuff at the moment? Where are you at with those three headings? You know, and if, if you're feeling like, you know, one or more of those areas could do with a little bit of help, then keep listening because I've got some really great ideas for you. And just know that you are not alone. I'm not perfect in these areas either. That's why this is a real interest of mine and I, I want to learn stuff to come together to help you with this stuff as well. I'm learning every single day. So um, the Australian ANZ Bank um, did a survey and found that 14 there's a 14% drop in the level of comfort in Australians and New Zealanders. Um, in terms of their financial situation and a massive increase in terms of worry about future. So, you know, that stuff's pretty obvious, but, you know, 14% drop, that's pretty huge. So the reason why is that people have stopped saving. You know, have you noticed that? Have you stopped being able to, well, not being able to, but have you stopped the, the percentage of savings that you're putting in every week? Or has it really declined? Or are you still keeping that up because you still realize the importance of that? 
you know, have you dipped into your super? And again, there's absolutely no judgment here. And I am a psychologist, so none of what I say is specific advice for you. It's all just really, really general and to very much seek, you know, your own professional financial advice here. Um, but, you know, and ha ha have you had to dip into other kind of reserves that you that you had as a safety net before? Or have you had, have you had to sell some of your assets, you know? Um, so financial resilience is another term that I want to talk to you about. And it's basically the ability to bounce back after a massive financial shock. And I think that we've all kind of experienced that in one, one shape or another with this pandemic. Um, and the impact that that reduced financial resilience can have on your well-being across all areas of your life is huge. You know, the impact that it has on your relationships. You know, how many of you are, are fighting with your partner about money at the moment? You know, your physical health. How many of you are losing sleep at night because you're worried about money? You're worried about, you know, what's what, how you're going to pay certain bills um, or, you know, how your business may have declined. You know, the, the mental and emotional stress is huge. You know, um, the effect that it has on your eating, you know, just, you know, making really quick choices because you haven't really got the time or energy at the moment to really devote to kind of, you know, nourishing yourself properly. Perhaps your comfort eating, perhaps your comfort drinking, you know, it just has such a huge impact. So there are four key essential components of financial resilience. So it's really not, it's not a state of mind like a lot of people might think about when they think of the word resilience. It's really a, a, a tangible thing that we can actually work on every single day to improve it. So the first thing is having financial inclusion. So I said it at the start, financial inclusion is having the, you know equal access and opportunity to things like, you know, saving institutions, insurance, um, being able to get out a loan if you need it, that's safe. Um, and, you know, having, having access to equity. So having financial inclusion is really important. And in Australia and New Zealand, we're, we're pretty lucky that I think we, we all have access to that. You know, number two is having financial capability. So, so that's knowledge. So knowledge and skills about money and finances and, and products that are out there and actually putting in the right behaviors to actually put all this stuff into, um, into practice, you know. So what do we actually do with our money once we've learned what to do with it? I listened to an incredible podcast by Chris Harder called For the Love of Money. And his tagline is, when good people make good money, they do great things. And I learn so much all the time about money and everything around it, you know, and um, what amazing people are doing with it, you know, how to make more of it and how to make a bigger impact with it. So, and, and I just learned so much from him. Number three is having economic resources, so actual access to money. So obviously being able to earn money, you know, being able to create a safety net in your savings, managing your debt well, and obviously retirement planning as well. So this that's the third factor that will enhance your financial resilience. And the fourth factor, which is my favorite, which is having social resources around money. So being able to have healthy conversations about money with people that you trust, you know, um, having a healthy relationship with money, you know, what is your money story? We all grow up with hearing different stories about money and seeing and observing the way that money is dealt with with our parents and grandparents and relatives. And those stories become ingrained in us and develop, we develop beliefs around that, that then we, we utilize as we become adults and we, we use those beliefs to, um, to dictate our behaviors around money. And some of it is really quite unconscious and we're not really aware that we're doing it, but we are, we unconsciously kind of sabotage, um, our financial situation because of these stories. So you know, have a think about what your money story is. And if you want want some further help with that, let me know. I'd love to talk to you further. Um, for example, like it's greedy to want more money. It's tacky to talk about it. You know, you might feel like you've got a financial ceiling that you can't bust through. You know, um, so that that's some ideas there. 
but in, and also in terms of having social resources, having great social support. So, you know, financial help if you ever needed it, knowing that you could turn to a particular person or a group of people and they would help you. So those are the four ways to kind of increase financial resilience. Um, but Venita from Financial Services Australia actually came up with a really simple framework that you can actually do right now besides those things to actually help you. So three steps. So she talked about refocusing, refreshing and restarting. So I'll just quickly go over these now. And as I'm talking, think about where you can actually do these things. So refocusing um, in this current climate that we're in. So really giving yourself the time and space to reflect on your financial situation right now and and reflect on what your new normal might be, you know. Have you got reduced hours? Is, has your income reduced? You know, um, have you had to completely change jobs? You know, uh, has one of your spouses had to, is now, one, is now one of you working from home or both of you? You know, what is the current situation? Get your head out of the sand and just turn the light bulb on and become really aware of where things are right now because without that awareness you're not going to be able to make any change and that awareness will actually help you to accept where things are now so that you can really clearly move forward until you actually <clears throat> kind of accept particular situations then you're not going to be able to ever kind of move forward because you're always kind of holding back and holding on to the status quo well, not even the status quo, the past, and not understanding that things have changed. And that's okay. Life is full of change. Hey, Belle. So the next step is to refresh. So refresh your approach. So think about how you do things and how you've done things before, and maybe things need to change. So maybe you need to budget for the very first time in your life. Maybe you need to take a calculator to the supermarket and actually add everything up as you go so that you haven't got a huge shock at the end because you don't just have like a, a reserve that you can just draw into if you went over at Woolies. You know, perhaps you've got to change your insurance package so that your premiums are reduced. You know, perhaps you do need to um, refresh your thinking, you know, rather than like, I'll never get used to this new situation. Hi, Bulla, Tina in Fiji. You know, perhaps you're, you know, you say to yourself, I'm learning new healthy habits and new ways to, to manage and get ahead these days with the, the new situation that I'm in. So you might need to refresh some of your thinking and refresh some of your habits to actually cope with this new reality that you refocused in in step one. And step three is restart, which is my favorite step. So it's really about building back better so that your well-being is not as impacted next time because we know that this is going to happen again. A, re a recession is going to happen again, you know, and if it's not a recession, then something will happen to you that will impact your financial resilience again. We know that as long as you're living, that's going to happen. That's how it works. So what are you going to do differently so that next time perhaps you're not as impacted as possible? You know, so much of this stuff is out of our hands, but, you know, if we completely take that victim mindset and take all the control away from us, then we're really not going to ever do anything to improve our situation because we're just going to be like puppets just being, just floating around with no sense of self-efficacy. So it's about building back better. So what do you wish that you had in place this time that you that you didn't have in place and what can you put in place for next time when it does happen again you know so next time how can i ensure that i'm better set up to cope so perhaps you know you're you're looking at creating a financial runway which is something i'm working on you know i'm working on you know a multiple thousands of thousands of dollar in, um, runway so that you know when this happens again next time, you know, I'm better, I'm better equipped. I've got that runway ahead of me or if anything was, was to change. Yeah, that's it, Tina. Yeah. And that's okay. That's completely okay. Because then you take the emotion out and you're just, you're just working with what you've actually got. Um, you know, perhaps you want to pay off more of your mortgage, you know, perhaps you want to smash that a little bit more and take that a little bit more seriously so that you, you know, you've paid off more or you've got some, you've got kind of like a buffer that you can draw down if you need to, 
Perhaps you want to think about creating a secondary income stream, maybe one that you can work from home. You know, perhaps that, that means, you know, uh, starting a new business, you know, getting into the U economy, you know, um, Uber driving, whatever it might be, or or maybe even starting a network marketing business, which is something that I'm really passionate about. You know, absolutely low startup costs that you actually consume yourself um, and a whole range of incredible supports so that you can actually be the CEO of your own home-based business but it's really without all the risks of creating, you know, your own business yourself, like, or, or getting into a franchise. So that is, that's a, a, such a great way to kind of create that secondary income. Perhaps it's about regular savings or kind of not borrowing so much, um, you know, or, or perhaps not using afterpay or zip pay as often. Or perhaps it's actually doing a course about money. You know, there's so much help. There's so many resources out there that you can actually plug into to increase your knowledge repertoire to help you make better decisions. So hopefully that's been really helpful. I just wanted to drop in a, a line, a phone number for financial counselling. So there's actually a national debt helpline. So it's 1-800-007-007, which I thought was quite a fitting number there. Um, the website is ndh for national debt headline.org.au. There, the number is, is available. There's someone on the end of the phone Monday to Friday in working hours. So just talk about it. Get some advice from, from them if you need some help and you really are struggling Reach out if you need to as well. As I said, I'm not a financial expert. I'm a psychologist, but I, I'm interested in, in this stuff and really helping people. So let's look at you know improving your financial well-being because I know that it will make such a difference in, in every other area of your life. It just, it just really will. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you next week. Bye, guys.